What is up, YouTube? It's your boy Zorpaka here from the Zortnay Partnership, and today I'm going to be bringing you a Shadow of Mordor review. Before we get started, I love Shadow of Mordor. It's an awesome, awesome, awesome game in my opinion. But before we begin, I also wanted to talk briefly about what my friend Andrew has done. He made me a new intro instead of the one that you see that you just saw. And it's really good, but it's on an SWF file, so he has to confirm it before I could use it. We one of you at but, Narcos, like, eh? along with the con commentary, so I think that this game is really good for a number of reasons, including its graphics are incredible, its fighting is one of the best that I've ever played, especially for sword fighting, and it has fantasy parts and a great storyline. It also has open world sandbox capabilities, sneak mode, OP perks, and a phenomenal nemesis system. So despite this, there are a few shortcomings to the game, but I'll talk about that later. You should also stick around to the end of the video to see the final verdict of the game, and I'm gonna spoil it a little bit, it's gonna be really good. So, uh, so before we begin on all that though, I'm gonna say why this game is rated M, and I'd say that it's rated M because of its violence. There are a few graphic scenes in the beginning, like the opening cutscene's a little bit graphic, but there's nothing, no sexual drugs, nothing like that. So, it's all, it's pretty good. I think it's because, like, in some things, there's some, like, things where you cut people's heads off. So if you're a little bit queasy about that, I would not buy this game or watch too much of the next part of this video because we end up killing quite a few guys by doing what do you know of the so black hand of on to like the main genre so uh, the graphics in this game are really good i'm not sure if you can tell because of my capture system but they're uh, definitely next gen quality and i've been seeing a lot of new games that came out for xbox one that have just been ugh, okay in terms of how the graphics were, but in this game the graphics are phenomenal. So I'm also going to tell you a little bit about the cutscenes in this game. So the cutscenes, not like um, not like the one that we just saw right there, but the actual fighting hand to hand and then getting a um, sweet kill on somebody cutscenes are believable and they're done so so well. They look really really awesome. So you can look forward to that. I have a few ones around like I think 10-ish minutes in this video that are really that cool. So, moving on, we're going to be talking about the fight mechanic, if which is similar to the one that was in Batman Arkham Asylum, and that you press Y to counter and X to hit, but you can also build up your hit streak and do like devastating lethal attacks. And I find this is like a very, very effective, it seems smoother than Batman to me, like when I played it. The I guess the way that you're swinging your sword looks way more believable instead and stuff like that. So the fighting mechanics are awesome, but the other things about the game are that the engine that runs it is great. I never get like motion sick from it. And you can just move around flawlessly and it's like smooth and easy to handle. So the other thing about the fighting is that it becomes easier and easier as you continue to play. This is probably because of the perks, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later, but it's like it's very noticeable in how much you can like improve your fighting. So also in your second playthrough, you can fight. I at least I could fight way better. I was awful at fighting initially. So next, we're going to be talking about fantasy in this game, and fantasy I've. I personally find it, it's a lot more believable when your game does things that you seem inhuman, and it allows you to do some really like interesting, fun things with your character. Like there's a thing called Shadow Strike, where you basically can teleport around cutting everybody's heads off, but it costs you your uh, ammo from your bow. So it's that's regrettable, but it's still very, very, very good. And also it's sort of things like... Dishonored mixed with Assassin's Creed and the sort of uh, aspects of this that are fantasy like if you've played Dishonored or seen any of my other videos about it the blink feature it's sort of like stuff like that but it's sort of like Assassin's Creed in that it's a lot of like parkour 
um, fighting large groups of people, getting around, and then third person, of course. So, next, I'm going to talk a little bit about the open world sandbox. And the open world sandbox is, like, I guess I don't like playing on, like, mission-based things. There's a few games that are, like, okay. Like, Dishonored is a good example of that. But I prefer an open world game, and this game does it so, so, so well. Because you feel inclined to, like, do things off the beaten track, because it will give you specific perks and stuff like that. And here you can see I completely tricked that guy. And I guess this brings me to um, wa some of the problems of the game. And one of the real problems is that in what you just saw, after you put your hand on his head, you have to, your um, Celebrimbor, I guess, says something. And it's really, really annoying when he's saying something and you get hit in the back, which disrupts your like um, interrogating, which is one of the easiest way to finish off a captain. And that just drives me crazy when that happens, because normally when you, you've you fought him out, you've got him down to a low enough health, and then you're basically A-mashing until you can get the stupid interrogate, which is a time-stopped cutscene. I wish that they had done that with the actual, like when you put your hand on his head and did that stuff. But I apologize for like the pretty uh, jagged... I guess edit around there, but there's just this was like a 45 minute gameplay and I just had to cut it down a lot. So, again, some of the other things that were problems are that the uh, Nemesis system backfires on like newer players because if you have one guy who's just a real pain in the butt that you just cannot kill for the life of you, then he'll just get more and more powerful as you do and is. Like, interesting as that is, that nobody's ever, like, ridiculously easy, it can sometimes be annoying, because I had this one guy, and he was invincible to literally everything. He could not be killed with ranged attacks, uh, combat, he couldn't be damaged by combat, he couldn't be hit with stealth, and he was the most overpowered person ever. And he had one thing, he would be, like, terrified when you hit him with more guy flies. But he never hung around a place with more guy flies, which was... ridiculous. But... I was eventually able to literally lure him across the map to a spot where there were more guy flies and kill him. Which adds a dynamic element to the game that sort of involves more strategy, which I appreciate, but sometimes not to the extent that it feels like you've been cheated out of something when you just get killed over and over and over again. So, another thing is that drives me crazy is how you aren't allowed to brand people. Like, even if you have enough power, you aren't allowed to use the capability of branding people until over halfway through the game. Or maybe it wasn't half. It's probably about halfway through the game. When you get to your halfway mark, when you move to Nern, I think it is, you get that capability, and that is a really, really useful capability. Because you can literally take people from the other side in mid-combat, if you have combat brain, uh, brand them, and then they'll be on your side. And that's really fun, and it adds another element to the game where you're sort of running around creating your own orc army and trying to protect them from the, the other orcs, I guess they're called. But it's it's just really it's really fun. You wouldn't understand until you play it. So let me take a drink. Water with it. All right, back. So. That's, I think, all of my complaints with this game, and there's not, they're not really, like, a lot. They seem, like, all of those, I could live without, they didn't significantly affect the game, and there's one of the decapitations, but they didn't, like, so negatively affect the game that I was like, oh, well, that's, that's not even fun anymore, I can't do this. I was always, like, I was angry, but more at, like, my character for being stupid. And also, some of the walls in the game, they didn't texture, but I was stupid for running at the wall with, like, a giant overhang on it, but that's also really good. So, moving on. So, I was thinking that the story in this game is phenomenal. I believe that the people in the story and the story itself really, like, makes you want to play more. Because at the end, despite the end actually, 
where they it seems like they're asking for not asking for but they're implying that there's going to be a DLC pack or something that you're going to have to buy because at the eel if you played to the end of the game you would understand this but there's sort of a plot twist at the end and it sort of leaves you hanging there which is not good days. but the story itself is super complex and it's, I guess, it's really complex and it doesn't go the exact direction that you'd expect it. Like, I expected the game to follow like a linear path towards a goal, but instead it took many different like curves towards it, like how you would be involved with a uh, orc that would be helping you through the ranks as you were helping them. Like, that's really interesting and I think unique to this series if it becomes a series, or this game in particular. And here, everybody comes for some reason, so I end up fighting like 20 people and the captain. Which is unfortunate, but... Also, so the story allows you to play side missions, like, really thoroughly, because here I'm just... I'm just screwing around in the open world, and it's... <laughs> that's almost as fun as doing the actual missions, because I can run away if I want to, I can choose to do a bunch of things. And also, the side missions, when you kill one of these uh, captains, you get power, which allows you to get more and more uh, capabilities, I guess, or perks. And that's like some, that's a reward for doing the side missions, as it seems as if the side quests in other games are really just like playing around to get the loot and stuff. So, that adds a nice twist to it. And also, um, as I said above, orc rivalries are really, really fun. They're incredibly interesting, and I feel like I spend just as much time playing around with the dynamic orc, or orc, I guess, elements to the game. And here I get hit twice, because I was not paying attention, but... See, it's... It's like, when you play the game, the main quests are appealing, but running around in a free play map, finding down or hunting down the people that happen to kill you and stuff like that, that's the real like joy in playing the game. So um I think I think that's it. I mean there's going to be power struggles in like addition to that, where you uh, where two or a captain slug it out or do or ex one executes the other person or something like that and you want to distract it, distract them, kill the executor, weaken Sauron's army and stuff like that. Those get interesting in this first, like, area, but when you get to Nern and can brand people, it becomes much, much, much more interesting because you feel as if you can, like, you actually have a power, I guess, to do something because your people are brand... the people that you're branding sometimes end up in these power struggles and you want to make sure that they stay alive because that's that's always good and that brings us to our next part which is characters are very like believable well voice acted and they seem like funny they they have all of the character traits in addition to the people that you brand which are like <laughs> funny as ever as the orcs get uh, the uh, main characters on the good sides, like Talion, has a believable story. Celebrimbor is like a very intriguing story, well thought out. Love him; he's a really interesting man. And also Gollum is his part in this is really well thought out. I would say because the, he is able to uh, get his point across in a like Lord of the Rings fashion in this game which is great but also I would say that the other characters like uh, what's her name it's um uh, I forgot her name it's uh it's like Fariel I think so it's uh Lethariel yes Lethariel is um, she adds like almost a romantic type to the game that you it's sort of romantic but not at the same time like it's not mushy gushy but it seems like Talion is sort of interested in her which adds another element to the game which is nice instead of 
just hacking and slashing your way through stuff. But, like, in addition to, like, meaningful characters and stuff, there are funny characters, like Torvin, who is the monster hunter, he's a dwarf, he's quite funny to listen to, and then there's also people like, uh, what's his name, Ratbag, who's hilarious, he's an orc who basically you help out, and as you help him out, he helps you out until he becomes a war chief, and it's, he's just a trip, you'll have to play it to see. Here I miss my shot on the guy who's raising the alarm, which stinks, but it's fine. So, um, so like Assassin's Creed and Dishonored, uh, Shadow of Mordor is a really effective, or er, really effectively uses sneaking and climbing. So, I love Assassin's Creed and Dishonored, especially the part in Assassin's Creed where you can run and backstab people, and in Dishonored when you can use your mystical powers and stuff to create like, really interesting dynamic kills. And this uh, Shadow of Mordor is like a combination of these two games, in that you can run around and kill people, and climb up, and teleport, and do a bunch of stuff that I don't have enough. Uh, like, experience to do right now. So, also, the Nemesis system in this game is fantastic. It's incredibly fun, as I said before, just to run around, kill everybody, and then continue. Sorry about that cut. This stupid guy right here is like, so hard to follow, but yeah, the Nemesis system is like a really nice twist on an otherwise great game, too. And you feel, like, compelled to keep playing. Like, as soon as I stopped uh, playing, like, I finished the first game, I played it again and completed it again. And it was great. And you're seeing feed from my second one right now. But in addition to this, it's just... In addition to everything, it's a great game. It's graphics, it's fighting, it's sneaking, it's dynamic map. Everything's great about this game. But... The only thing that I wish is that some of, like, my requests for, uh, like, more fair, I guess, or more playable games are, would be fulfilled, because that would be great, but also, I wish that this game was longer. So, this was a very great game. I would give it a solid 9.5 out of 10, which is one of the highest, highest uh, ratings I could ever give a game. I love it. And I hope that there's a sequel. So, uh, that's all for today, guys. I hope that you've enjoyed the video. Hope it's been informative. Like if you've enjoyed it. Comment if you want to give constructive criticism. Or subscribe if you've really enjoyed it. And especially favorite. So, I think that's it. And, Banzai! What beautiful stones. This tower reborn, as am I.